Seat three, question four. We are at a tipping point in our city over the business of tourism with the true cost burdensome to residents. How will you correct this imbalance? This is one of my favorite subjects. I think many of you know that I'm really, I like numbers. Um, we really don't know how many tourists come to the city. The first thing we need to do to correct an imbalance is have a set of facts to work from. We don't know whether, as Ron said, it's people who are coming from the county. We have growth in the county. We don't know whether it's people passing through. We use as counts the number of cars that go through the city. We need to have real facts about the tourists. That said, it's clear there are costs associated with tourism that we haven't tracked in 10 years. The last time we calculated that cost, it was 1.6 million. So we know it's costing us money. Right now, for example, <coughs> Extra street cleaning is required in the tourist areas. Martha Graham told me that she spends about $250,000 a year doing that. In many cities that have tourist districts, it's standard practice to have a special assessment district for the businesses that benefit from tourism and incur the extra costs. So that's one, one lever that we have. Another lever that we have is we collect franchise fees from the trolleys. Right now, that's about 1.3 million a year. And we have the, the way that the agreement is written, it can go to 5%. Right now, it's at 3%. So we have ways to get additional revenue. There certainly are additional fees, as Ken mentioned. Might be historic preservation fee. There are other ways to do it. Tourists are amazingly price insensitive. They can have, <laughs> and, and, and they can, they'll pay a lot for parking. When I lived in Old Town Alexandria, which was a very similar place to this, bounded by water, you wound up paying a lot if you were a tourist to park, particularly if you parked in the wrong place. So there are lots of levers that we have, and we should use them. <laughs>